so fast. It's such a powerfully quick process. The results were just short of phenomenal. I kept getting feedback from my clients saying that it worked on them over and over again. releases people from the chains that keep them bound to a mediocre life. EFT should be tried for everything. It's an amazing resource tool and it should be in everyone's first aid kit. I think we've got to take a look at who we are and what we've got and how we function and then begin to apply this information in a practical manner. This is the second video in the Tapping World Summit warm-up pre-launch series, getting ready for the main Tapping World Summit coming up on February 4th. I'm so delighted to be here up in Massachusetts at the home of somebody that I've followed and admired for so many years, my dear friend, Dr. Mark Hyman. Now, you've probably heard of Mark. You might have seen him on 60 Minutes, The Dr. Oz Show, Larry King. The list is a mile long. And you might have also read some of his books. We got the Blood Sugar Solution here, his latest book, which was the fourth New York Times bestseller he's written. Congratulations fifth. on that. Fifth. Yeah. Oh, I thought, okay, well, you got to update your bio. It says, it says four New York Times. <laughs> so, Blood Sugar Solution, the fifth one. And, you know, he's, he's testifying in front of Congress, out there in the world, doing great things, spreading this message of health. And what I love about Mark is that not only is he a friend, he's my personal doctor, he's just the doctor with the biggest heart that I've ever seen. And I think that translates into his work, so I'm so excited to be Thank here with you. you today. Thanks, thanks, Mark. Thanks, thanks. Before we started rolling, we were talking about the time that you spent in India just, mm -hmm. just recently. You mm -hmm. just got just back. Just got back, yeah. And, you know, it brought me to think about this idea of East versus West, right? We have Western medicine, which is doctors, mm -hmm. right? Doctors, mm -hmm. surgery, pills, and then we have the East, which is other forms, acupuncture, mm -hmm. energy, just a different approach, herbs, right? right? Yeah. And it often feels like there's such a separation between the two and that one is right and the other one is wrong from each side's perspective, mm -hmm. right? And what, one of the things that I love about you is that I think you're sort of bridging that gap. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about functional medicine, which is what you practice, and how that's different from what people are used to hearing from doctors. Yeah, well, you know, you bring up a really interesting point about Eastern and Western medicine. In fact, the reason I, I ended up getting into functional medicine was because I was predisposed to thinking about the body as a system mm from my study of Chinese and Chinese medicine when okay. I was in college. So you did that first? I did that first. Okay. And I went to China, I lived in China for a year, and I studied a way of thinking that yeah. was quite different, that yeah. understood the connections and the patterns and the dynamic way in which the body works. Mm. And when I went to medical school, it was very reductionist, it was yeah. very focused on symptoms and diagnoses and treatments with medication and surgery, and it didn't really create an integrated picture mm -hmm. of how the body breaks down and sure. how you can create health. And, you know, I, I, uh, I came my, uh, upon functional medicine through getting sick myself. Okay. And it was through discovering the path to my own wellness through a horrible disease of chronic fatigue mm -hmm. that I discovered this model of thinking yeah. called functional medicine. It's not a different treatment sure. or a modality or a, 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 a test or a supplement. or it's a, it's a way of thinking about how the body works. And it's ironic now that I'm going back to China in two months yeah. to teach our training course in functional medicine to wow. hundreds of Chinese doctors. <laughs> so, well, they're going to be very receptive, I'm sure. Yeah, they're right. going to be very receptive. And it's, it's also interesting because they've also sort of gone to the Western model yeah. and realizing that doesn't really work. Yeah. So, it works for infectious disease. And I came back from India, and you know, people have diarrhea, and they have yeah. respiratory illnesses, and they have infections, and those things you know, need Western treatment, yeah. and they need basic, simple hygiene. You know, and I said to yeah. them, you know, the real treatment isn't doctors, the real treatment is hygiene. Sure, absolutely. You know, flush toilets, and hot water, and taking a yeah. shower. I mean, that was the biggest 
medical treatment I did there was teach the kids at the orphanage to take a shower twice a well, week and yeah. wash their hands before they ate and not cough on each other yeah. and not sleep together and getting them blankets so they wouldn't all be sleeping together and passing their fungus back and forth. Got it, got it. So it's very simple ideas. And for me, um, the, the seed was there out of my understanding of Western, uh, Eastern thinking. Mm. And when I got sick, I realized that what I learned in medical school wasn't really helpful sure. in having me solve this puzzle of chronic illness. And I went to doctor after doctor, got pill after pill, and everything broke down. You know, my system didn't work. I couldn't think, I couldn't focus, I couldn't remember, I couldn't sleep. My digestion didn't work. I had terrible chronic diarrhea. I had muscle and joint pain. I had terrible rashes. I had sores on my tongue. I had just horrible symptoms. My liver function tests were abnormal. My, my inflammatory markers were elevated. My blood count was depressed. I had all sorts of weird, strange things that no one could kind of figure out. Yeah, the mystery disease kind of thing that we see a lot yeah, of. Yeah, the mystery illness. and and. What it forced me to do was to understand everything about how the body breaks down and how it works. And, and in that process, I discovered some amazing thinkers like Dr. Jeffrey Bland, and Linus Pauling, Sidney Baker, some of my teachers and mentors who were mapping out a different way of connecting the dots. Mm. And what they'd done was fascinating. They'd taken all of the sort of existing research about sort of the way things work in the body. Yeah. And they reorganize it into a different sort of structure of thinking about how the body works and how it breaks down. So mm. they basically connected the dots. You've got all these researchers and all these people in silos and nobody talks to each other. Mm. But they took a 30,000 foot view and they said, well, how does everything really work? <laughs> so functional medicine is a way of thinking about how everything's connected. It's a roadmap. It's mm. like a way of navigating through the puzzle of chronic disease. And we have so much of it here. We have not only obesity-related diseases like diabetes, what I call diabetes, heart disease, dementia, stroke, cancer, high blood pressure, but we have all these other diseases that are also related to lifestyle and environment, like autoimmune diseases, allergic diseases, digestive disorders that affect millions and millions of people. And the combination of our poor diet, our industrial processed diet, lack of exercise, and chronic stress, all Three of those things are the trifecta that lead to chronic disease. And yeah. you add on top of all that environmental toxins, and you've got a real witch's brew for causing chronic disease. Sure, sure. I want to go back to the idea of, because I think people lose track of infectious diseases, right? As like you mentioned, this is where Western medicine comes in amazingly, yeah. right? And right. then these chronic diseases. What do people, you know, because people go, well, drugs are bad or drugs are good. This is bad or that's good. How do people make the distinction of, you know, do they need to see a doctor for what they're faced with? Do they need to see a functional medicine yeah. doctor? They need, you know. Well, I think in the future, every doctor is going to be sure. a functional medicine doctor because it's the science of systems biology and systems medicine, which is what everything is going on in, in yeah. science right now. So, you know, it takes about 10 to 20 years for what we know in science to be actually coming into practice. And we're, we're missing out on a lot of that mm -hmm. right now. But in 20 years, everybody will be thinking this way yeah. and doing this kind of medicine. Yeah. Uh, and it's applicable to any problem because it's simply asking a question, what's the cause? Sure. What is the cause? What is the root? And if the cause is an infection, you need an antibiotic. I have a patient with chronic fatigue today that had a chronic virus with HHV6. She needed a special antiviral medication. Yeah. And I also did things to help boost your immune system. So I work on multiple levels at the same time. You know, getting rid of the thing that's causing a problem, whether it's a toxin, an allergen, an infection, a stress, or poor diet, yeah. and putting in the things the body needs to thrive, which is real food and the right nutrients and management of stress and sleep and rhythm, exercise, connection, love, meaning. All these are the, the, the really raw materials mm. and ingredients for creating health. Mm. You mentioned chronic stress, which I think, it, it's my opinion, this is where tapping comes in brilliantly, and we'll talk about that in a second, but it's my opinion that chronic stress is one of the things that people acknowledge very quickly, like doctors will say, oh yeah, stress affects the body. But here, but take it, this drug. But here, take this drug, and it's just pushed to the side. And I don't think that most people, because I found it in myself, really recognize the toll that chronic stress, and it's not, there's a difference between the acute stress of something happens in your life, fight or flight, you get to respond, mm -hmm. and the chronic stress of every single day, waking up in the morning yeah. with your heart racing or anxiety and going to sleep upset and mm -hmm. dealing with all these things. So talk to me about chronic stress and the body. Well, it's, it's an enormous problem because we're now more than ever inundated with things that stress our nervous system. And we don't realize 
from a biological point of view that we're in the 21st century, yeah. that we're safe, that we're not threatened by tigers and lions. Yeah. And I mean, I was in Bhutan trekking, and there were there were tigers and lions, there, yeah. and there were yeah. you know, so no there, there it's okay to be a little stressed, right? <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, when I went out at night to go to the bathroom, I was a little worried. But yeah. you know, it, it's uh, it's something where we're, we're we're not intellectually able to sort of distinguish, yeah. and so our body perceives these insults, whether it's your your texting message buzzing every three minutes, yep. or emails coming in, or your phone going off, or the 40 things you have to do on your to-do list, those things your body doesn't distinguish as you know, non-life-threatening sure. stresses. So the same response your body has. And that creates huge wear and tear on the body. And there's a great book by a friend and colleague of mine, Dr. Robert Sapolsky, called Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers. And why zebras don't get ulcers is because they're eating the grass, the lion comes, chases them all, they run like crazy, yeah. get enormously stressed, the lion catches one of them, they eat, they're eating it, and then the rest of them go back to eating the grass, yeah. and they stop worrying because yeah. somebody's getting eaten. <laughs> so it's like we just keep stressed all the time. Yeah. And, and we don't have a way of managing it and processing it, and we don't have the, the rituals and the customs mm -hmm. in our culture that allow us to do that properly. Yeah. We don't have the kinds of relationships and connections and friendships and social support that need, help us do those things. And so a lot of us are, are chronically stressed without that mm -hmm. outlet, and we don't have a way of, of de-stressing. So a lot of what I do in my practice is teach people about the methods and tools to de-stress, whether it's breathing or meditation or tapping, mm -hmm. which I've referred many patients to you. I, I, f I find what is the right appropriate thing for them to help them unhook from the chronic stress. Yeah. You mentioned in your list of things that contribute, you said chronic stress, and also you threw in love and meaning in there. That's yeah. not something that you hear from many doctors. What does that have to do with our health? Well, I mean, the biology of love is fantastic. Anybody who's fallen in love knows that most of their physical problems go <laughs> yeah, away yeah. You know, as soon as they fall in love. They sleep better, they're happier, their weight, weight loss happens. I mean, yeah. it's pretty amazing what happens. And when we have that connection, it, it's, it's, a, it's like food for yeah. our biology. There's been amazing studies on monkeys where they've taken monkeys and had them have exactly the same diet and environment except for one thing. One had connection with their mother and the other they took away from their mother. And the ones that had no physical connection with other monkeys or other, their mother looked old and wizened and, and sick mm. and withered and, and got much ill, more ill, more quickly yeah. than the other monkeys, even though they had exactly the same diet and lifestyle. Yeah. So just that ingredient is really critical. Yeah. We've talked about childhood trauma, you know, off camera and how that contributes to disease. And I think in one of our first initial conversations, yeah. it was like, okay, well, what can we do to use tapping on childhood trauma yeah. and, and how that contributes? So yeah, that's what problem. that study is yeah. showing. So when, when we first met, you know, you had heard about EFT, you had heard about tapping and hadn't experienced it yourself, but I, I challenge you, I said, give me your hardest patience, I did, I you know, did. and I, you I, gave me your hardest <laughs> patience. I, you know, part of your regret is like, okay, I got my work cut out for me here. So let's talk about one of them. And, and she's, it's okay that we share her name because she's been public about her results yeah. and her name is Paula. So tell yeah. me about your experience with Paula and, uh, and then I'll chime in and what happened. And, sure. Uh, well, Paula is the sweetest woman I've ever yeah. met. And, uh, you know, she had so many different physical health problems that were her, her headaches and her hormones and digestion and fatigue. And she had a very constricted life yeah. where she couldn't go out, she couldn't function, she could barely eat anything. And her life was very much sort of in a bubble. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting when I see patients because many patients can come to me and many of them can have exactly the same problem. And some I just do a few little magic tricks and they get better, yeah. and others don't. Yeah. And when they don't, I realize that there's something deeper sure. going on. There's another layer. And so I had a you know long talk with Paul one day. I took some time, and I said, "What's really going on? Like, tell me your life story. What happened like way back when?" And you know, her her um, her her sister had died, and she got to take care of her her nephew yeah. and raised him. And when he was a young man, he killed himself and it destroyed her. Yeah. And that trauma was buried in every cell of her body and she couldn't get rid of it. Yeah. So I thought of you. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> I said, they can handle this. And it was amazing. She did the tapping yeah. and she had that release, that emotional freedom from this trauma that yeah. she had buried in her tissues. And she became liberated, she became pain-free, she was able to function, have a life. It was extraordinary. And yeah. We went on a trip together. It was just really amazing to see her emerge. Yeah, you that. saw her afterwards on the trip when she was pain-free. I, I mean, you know, 
she had migraines for 11 years, I think it was, was on all sorts of meds that she was at the point, and you see it again and again with pain medication, mm -hmm. where you get to the point where it's not doing anything, but you can't stop taking it, and now mm -hmm. she, you throw the sleep meds on top of that yeah. that she was taking to try to fall asleep, yet she wasn't sleeping, right. you know? So it's like, got pain meds, got sleep meds, right. not sleeping, sleeping in pain, right. you know? Right. Like, what's, what's going on here? And when we worked together, we worked on that childhood trauma, and I think one of the challenges with chronic diseases like this, that there's so many layers to it. Mm -hmm. You know, so first we worked on the pain, on just, the, we worked on childhood trauma, then we worked on the physical pain, then on the psychological dependence on the drugs, the expectation that I'm gonna need this, the expectation that I'm gonna need this sleeping pill in order to sleep, and then the detox. I mean, you know about detox from, yeah, you know, those drugs. It's very difficult. It is. And we use the tapping to release those symptoms. So when yeah. the nausea came up and when the fear came up and yeah. when the desire to go back to that, and then there's the things that change where, well, now my life is so different. Now I have to go and see my friends that I couldn't see before because I had the headache as an excuse. Yeah, and guess yeah. what? I don't really like that group of friends. <laughs> you know? I mean, I think it was a good excuse. It was a good excuse. I like my you, headache. You know? Exactly. Exactly. There, there's so many layers to it. And what I love about tapping is that it helps to unravel those mm -hmm. layers. And you can do it with somebody like me or another professional, or you can do it by yourself yeah, and right. have that experience. It's, just, it's essential for healing. I mean, yeah. there's, there's three things that are critical for healing. It's what you eat and eating real, fresh, whole food. Yeah. Uh, and I was in a restaurant the other day, it was in New York, it was hysterical. The, the guy asked for Coke, and the waiter wouldn't give it to him. He says, I'll give you anything else that's real, but I'm not giving you that because it's fake food. It's really? High fructose corn syrup is going to kill you. I'm like, great. I love <laughs> the waiters are, st are stopping it right there. It. They're the front line of hell. I was like, yeah. this is phenomenal. The second thing is moving your body. Yeah. We're designed to move. And walking, exercise, play, your bodies have to move to be healthy. And the third thing is learning how to reset your nervous system through relaxing. Yeah and through dealing with chronic stress. And there are so many phenomenal tools to do that, but tapping is one of the most directed and powerful ways to peel those layers yeah. away of chronic stress. And they're very effective for very difficult problems. Yeah, absolutely. So tell me, you talked about in 10 or 20 years this becoming mainstream, this way of thinking. Tell me some good news about the future. What are you seeing happening no. that's changing? I mean, you're, you're on the front lines, like I said, testifying in front of Congress, really working and getting this information out. And it, when you look around, it seems like some good things are happening and some bad, so give me the good news. Well, today, today I saw a patient who um, is on the board of the Brigham and Women's Hospital. She's uh, had a health problem that she's seen the top doctors. I mean, they donate a ton of money to the hospital. So they have you know, top tier yeah. care, access to anybody. And she wasn't really getting better. And she mm -hmm. had all sorts of side effects for the treatment. Uh, and she went to one of the head doctors there. The guy was in charge of, I can't really say, but one of the top yeah. departments. A world famous guy, and she said, "Well, I, I'm, you know, what do I do? Like, I want to see the guy here. I want to work with Dr. Hyman." She said, "Oh, Dr. Hyman, you know, is going to help you figure out the cause. You're going to need to kind of work with both for a while, but you know, you should definitely pursue that." And coming from you know a top guy at yeah, Harvard, yeah. who's like realizing that the future is not exactly as it was. Yeah, yeah. So you're not a quack anymore, is that you know? <laughs> not really, I guess. You know, it's interesting, and, and I can tell you how many patients of mine are doctors. Wow. You know, a lot of wow. my patients are doctors because they recognize that we don't know everything in yeah. medicine and, and there are many different ways of approaching problems that work better. Another patient of mine had, another woman from Harvard had anaphylaxis. She died twice, coded because she stopped breathing. She had horrible hives and rashes. She was on 42 different pills, things for asthma and, and allergies, I mean, just everything. Mm -hmm. Had seen the top immunologist and allergist at Harvard and was still not better. Uh, and came to see me within six weeks, was off all her medication, completely symptom free. And you know, the doctor there was great. He's like, hey, you know, there's something here. I'm gonna yeah. start checking it out and sending patients and maybe I'll go to the course, you know? Yeah. So I think, you know, things are shifting yeah. and I see that happening. In 20 years, I think people are gonna recognize that, you know, our method of, of thinking about disease is wrong and our way of diagnosing disease is wrong. It's not based on these underlying connections between all the systems in the body. That yeah. The body's really an integrated whole. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think what we have going for us most in trying to change this is the fact that the other things are not working at all. I mean, people are sick and tired of being sick and tired. So they're looking for other yeah. solutions. What else can I do to modulate my stress, that's to right. find better food, and to have a better life experience? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, we're looking at health here, but at the, at the end really of the day, it's life. about quality of life. Yeah. Right? And I, you know, I use all the tools at my disposal. Yeah. I use surgery, I use medication, I use diet, I yeah. use supplements, I use herbs, I use tapping. I find what's the right approach for this particular patient, mm -hmm. and what is it that's getting to the root cause? Yeah. That's a very different way of thinking. Yeah.
Well, Mark, this has been very enlightening as always. Thank you so much for your time and uh, Thanks, we'll talk soon. All right. Thanks everybody. See you soon.